that's what life is all about, is overcoming obstacles. You see, the sure. doctor said you're in great health, but they would recommend that you go and replace your valve, your heart valve. It's leaking blood. But you know something? I always had a very clear vision of me being on that set of Terminator on August 1st, exactly the day when I'm supposed to be there. So I'm concerned that young people today don't have a clear vision. 70% of the people were not happy with their job, what they were doing during the day. What stands in the way becomes the way. Congratulations to the class of 2020. But I'm not going to stand here and bull about this being a fantastic time to graduate. I mean, just recently, I participated in my son Christopher's graduation from the University of Michigan over Zoom. And I know that virtual graduations aren't the celebration that you envisioned. But the world is in a crisis. This coronavirus is unbelievable. But no matter how much damage this coronavirus does around the globe, let me be clear. Coronavirus can't erase your success. No way. But life is messier than an Instagram feed. That's clear. I can promise you this virus won't be the last obstacle that you face. But it can help you prepare for the next one. That's what life is all about. is overcoming obstacles. You see, throughout the whole life you will see obstacles being thrown in front of you like that. I mean, let me just tell you a brief story about the biggest obstacle that I faced just two years ago, literally four months before shooting Terminator 6 Dark Fate. I got a physical. I went to the doctor and he checked me up. That's what you always do before you start a movie. The doctor said you're in great health, but I would recommend that you go and replace your valve, your heart valve. It's leaking blood. So I said, well, I'm not going to have open heart surgery now four months before shooting Terminator. Are you crazy? I was just in the middle of working out really with heavy weights and everything, getting ready, doing my stunt training and everything. I'm not going to go now and have open heart surgery. And he says, no, no, the technology has changed. This is not any more open heart surgery. This is a non-invasive surgery that it goes through your artery on the bottom, go up to your heart, replace the valve, and the next day you go home. And then a week later, you can continue with your regular training. And then I remembered that a friend of mine, a 90-year-old producer, had the procedure done just recently. And I said to him, I said, wait a minute, two days after the procedure, he was there at a meeting in the studio in Hollywood, and he looked fantastic. So I said, okay, I do it. So after I woke up from that surgery, I woke up 16 hours later, instead of four hours. And there was a tube sticking out of my mouth. And then the doctor moved forward and he took the tube and ripped it out of my throat. And I was coughing violently. And he said, just keep coughing, he says. And then let us tell you what happened. So then he told me that they had to do an emergency surgery, that something went wrong during this kind of non-invasive procedure. And then it became very invasive. They said that they broke through the heart wall and there was internal bleeding and I could have died if they didn't open up my sternum and then do open heart surgery. So imagine, a day before I was in the hospital, I was training really hard for Terminator 6. And now all of a sudden he's telling me that they were saving my life. Then he goes on and he says, you're not out of the woods yet. There's another danger. There's still patients in our heart unit here that after heart surgery pass away, die because, not because of the heart surgery, but because of the lung. They get pneumonia. So we are really worried about you getting pneumonia. He says the only way you can really protect yourself is to do breathing exercises. Here's a plastic to breathe into that all the time throughout the whole day, and then start walking, get up and walk around with the walker. Now, all of a sudden, I had to go and make myself get out of the bed and start walking with that walker. I did the first 10 steps like an old man. It was unbelievable, but I tell you one thing. My usual principles worked because I was visualizing right away that I'm going to be on the date, August 1st, I will be on a set and I will be shooting Terminator. And I will be doing my fight scenes and everything that it requires. That's what I was shooting for. So I started declaring little victories. After I did the first 500 steps with the walker, I declared victory. 
after I had an appetite again to eat normal, I could get victory. Then I was discharged to go home out of the hospital finally, and finally I could train again with the light weights. Then I did train with heavier weights. But you know something? I always had a very clear vision of me being on that set of Terminator on August 1st, exactly the day when I was supposed to be there. A very clear vision, and I concentrated on that vision, and everything that I did, my walking and my breathing exercises, and the weightlifting and everything like this, was going towards that vision to make that a reality. So, sure enough, comes August 1st, I'm there in Budapest on a set of Terminator 6 and battling it out with the new Terminator, the more sophisticated Terminator, the Rev-9. We had the fight scene, kicking each other and punching each other and rolling around and falling down the steps and on and on and on. It was the most wild kind of a fight scene that you can imagine. We did this for two days. The director, Tim Miller, came up to me after these two days and said to Mrs. Arnold, you machine. I said, no, I'm just back. Now, the reason why I'm telling you all this is because no matter how successful you are, life will throw obstacles in your path. Like it was with my heart surgery or like with your graduation now. But if you have a very clear vision, like I talked about earlier, of exactly what you want to do and who do you want to be, you can go and find a way around all of those obstacles. Because I had a very clear vision, I was able to find a way around and to get right there and to do my movie. You see, the reason why I'm talking about the vision is because one time I gave a graduation speech and I remember it very clearly the next day I was celebrating with the students and I was asking them, I said, what do you want to do now? You have this degree, what do you want to do with this degree? And they said to me, well, if I'm lucky, I maybe get a job and they were all over the place with what they said, but they didn't have a very clear vision. As a matter of fact, one guy looked at me like a deer in a headlight, like, uh, uh, uh. Didn't even know what to say when I asked him about his vision, where he wanted to go. So I'm concerned that young people today don't have a clear vision. And that's a real problem because, you see, in America, we did a poll and 70% of the people were not happy with their job, what they were doing during the day or at night. Now think about that, 70% of the people are not happy with their work. Every day they go to work, they're not happy. That is a terrible statistic. I don't want you to be part of that statistic. This is why it is so important to have a vision. If you know your vision, your working will be fun. You see, when you have a vision, then it's not a grind anymore to go towards your vision and the work that you're doing. And this is why people ask me all the time, I said, Arnold, we saw you in Pumping Iron and we saw you smiling all the time and being happy. And the other guys all had kind of serious faces and looked very intense. And I said to them, that was because I was happy to work out. I smiled because I was looking forward to every 500 pound squat every 700 pound deadlift, every crunch, every chin up, every curl, every squat, everything. Because every rep brought me closer to my vision. Every weight that I lifted brought me one step closer to that vision of becoming the Mr. Universe, the greatest bodybuilder of all time. If you only remember one thing today it is, you must have a very clear vision. You must develop that very clear vision. Ask yourself, who do you want to be? Not what, but who. You see, a disaster can change what you are. It can steal jobs and force you inside. But it is who you are that rises in the face of adversity. And Marcus Aurelius, who was the great emperor in the gladiator movie, and is one of the greatest minds among the Roman emperors, he said, what stands in the way becomes the way. Now, what does that mean? That means that a life will be always about obstacles in front of you. And it is the way to overcome those obstacles. There's nothing unusual. That's the way it is. So when you know your vision, every setback, every stepping stone, every struggle, all resistance builds your inner strength, builds your character, makes you strong as a person. You see, your mind is no different than your body. 
I mean, I could be doing curls like this with no weights all day long, nothing would happen to my arm. But as soon as I put a weight into my hand and there is resistance, now the bicep will respond and it will grow. It will get bigger, it will pump up and the arms will get stronger. The same is true with the mind. Embrace the climb towards your vision and not just the selfie that you take at the top because the climb is what makes you grow and build who you want to be. You can ask any mountain climber that has climbed Mount Everest. They will tell you that it was the climb up to the top, to the peak. That was the learning experience. That was the thing that they will remember, not just standing up there on top at the peak and doing the selfie and take the photograph and then have to turn around again right away so they make it down before it gets dark. It's the climb. And think back over the last four years. I mean, the struggle that you went through to get this degree now. The all-nighters before the test. The essays that required two pots of coffee. The study groups that you put together. And you came together to study together and struggle together. Those are the things that you will remember. Not just this degree. You are celebrating the journey today. Not just a piece of paper that you hang on the wall. This is nothing. I mean, we all have those pieces of papers. But, I mean, let's be honest. This celebration, by the way, is not the end. Yes, it is the end of this particular chapter, but it is the beginning of your next climb. It is time to celebrate now, be in the moment, enjoy it, go all out. Yes, of course. But tomorrow, when this is all over, it is time to start developing your vision and it's time to start climbing towards that vision. Thank you very much, all of you, for listening. God bless America and God bless all of you around the globe. Hasta la vista. That's what life is all about, is overcoming obstacles. You see, the see. doctor said you're in great health, but I would recommend that you go and replace your valve, your heart valve.